sponsor for today's video, and that's Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions of people come together to make the next step in their artistic journey. There are thousands of classes that you can choose from in topics such as fine arts, creative writing, graphic design, photography, and more. Most classes are under 60 minutes with a short lesson that fits any schedule. And if you decide to sign up with Skillshare, it's under $10 a month. The first 1,000 people who click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Skillshare Premium. If you're interested in taking more advanced classes on watercolor or even beginner classes, Watercolor Witch Eliza teaches over on Skillshare. That's who I watched when I wanted to learn. Hi guys, welcome back. I cannot believe that we made it to video 10, the last video in the color blending series. And let me tell you, you guys did great. I've seen your pictures and you did an incredible job. If you're new here and you don't know what the color blending system is, there's a link to it in the description box below. We are on class 10, which for your final class, we're going to talk about color lay down. Now, throughout the whole entire nine weeks that we've been doing this, I haven't put my emphasis on color. And even though it's a color blending class, my goal was to teach you about tonal value and how to stretch that tone. You can color a tiger blue and you'll still know it's a tiger because of the tonal values that you're putting on the paper. Tonal value is going to make or break your entire picture. So that's why I didn't really concentrate on specifics when it came to actual colors. But in the book for the class, you were given four, over 400 of these cards. These cards are samples for you. For those of you who are still having trouble putting pencils together, that's what those cards are there for you. You don't even have to think about it. Your colors combinations are there. You don't have to use every color on the card. If there's five colors on the card and one of them is not right for the picture that you're doing, leave it out. What I wanna specifically talk to you today about is how to lay down those colors because really all I did was give you a list of colors and said go at it. Today we're going to talk about how to lay down those colors and I have a whole bunch of tips for you and the way I do it. For every artist out there they lay their color down differently so what I do may not be the same thing that another artist does or or you might not be comfortable and you like another method. They're not wrong this is art there's a million ways to get to the end. I can only show you some of the tricks that I use to get to that end product. But before I do that, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first thing I do is I always do a three layer and then a blend. So I'm going to take a pencil and we'll just use this on the lollipops. Now, by now, you should know how to do a lollipop, how to light. And you can use these to practice the different techniques. For me, I'm going to teach you color lay down on them. So we're going to put three layers and they're going to be light layers. Okay. Then I'm going to, I'm going to that's the first layer. I'm going to turn the paper slightly where well, you can turn your hand and I'm going to do another layer. My third layer and I'll Choose a different color green so you can see it. Third layer, I'm going to do a blending, and that's the circular stroke. And that mixes your colors in together. And that's one way of doing it. The second way that I do it, and of course you would, you can choose to put white at the top to create a gradient. It all depends on what you're actually coloring. The next way is when I create a highlight. Now, I, I use a pull method for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to bring it towards the middle where I'm going to put the highlight. Now, this can only be done with wax. Now, we don't, we haven't talked about oil pencils and in the up and coming weeks, we're going to be doing a lot of work with oil pencils. All those pencils that you buy that are budget, that are coming out of China, 
A lot of people mistake them for wax pencils. And I, I, I see a lot of people giving a lot of misinformation. Those are all oil pencils. Same as polychromos. Those are not wax pencils. Predominantly in, in China and Japan, they use oil. And all those pencils are oil. So I'm going to bring the color into the middle. Then I'm going to take my highlight, which I'm going to use sand. And I'm going to pull into the middle from the green. And then I'm going to pull it up from the other edge. So I use this a lot when I'm creating a highlight. And this is another layer. And then I'm going to use my highlight to pull the color closer together. The most popular thing to use this method on is metal. This is how I create the highlights when you want to create a brushed metal look. Okay, I just want to get a little bit of a shadow over here because it bugs me. Not to have it. <laughs> okay, so that's the second way of doing it. Now, there's a third way of coloring, and it's really not for Prismacolor. And I know that a lot of people use one pencil, and that's all they use. You can use many different pencils because pencils, oil and wax pencils, do completely different things. Wax pencils will blend with each other. Oil pencils don't do that. They're more vibrant, but they sort of stay where you put them. And that's why oil pencils should be used when you're doing your detail work. Now, there's a third way of doing it, which this is probably not the best picture available for it. Okay, when I lay down color with a Prismacolor, I usually start with my lighter color because you can always get darker. Your darker colors, it's very hard to get lighter. I mean, it's not an always rule. So this is actually going to be the lighter of my color because it's kind of on the bottom where the, the light wouldn't be. Instead of building the color up, I'm going to add the color to where it is going to stay. I don't want this color moving into the middle. I want to now take another pencil or a different color. And that's why this is not the best picture to be doing this. So now I want to add it. And what I'm doing is I'm working in very tiny areas and I would sweep the picture. I wouldn't necessarily say, I wouldn't necessarily go over here and put in my darks and then put over here my lights and work from the middle. What I'm doing with this one is I'm going to sweep the picture going upward. Now, this is mostly done for detail work. i actually be teaching you this method. People who have arthritis may like this method because you're not constantly pushing the wax around the page. And it's more meant for oil pencils. My final way of laying down color is by color dominance. Now, did you ever see me, and some of you might have, I want this to be brown, okay? This lollipop's gonna be chocolate. But I suddenly start with a red. And 
Then I'm going to add in yellow. But I'm making chocolate. What, what am I doing? I'm going to let the dominant color go on top. And I actually had some people ask me the question, did you make a mistake and decide to change your color? And why do I have to add so many colors underneath if my top color is going to be a certain color? Because the colors are going to tint each other. Um, let me see if I find it here. See this? All of these lollipops I colored with the same four pencils. They all have a different look. And that's when I'm using the dominant color method. So now I have the red and my yellow. Now I'll go and take a brown. I have a chestnut in my hand. And now for my third color, I'll add the brown. Now remember when we did skin tone and I have tons of those videos. This is sort of the method that I use when I'm doing skin tone. I want to let that under color come through with my top color being dominant. I don't want to blend. I wouldn't come in and go, oh, I'm going to take my brown and I'm now I'm going to go like this. That's not what I want. I want that red to shine through and tint it up. So you could actually see the red coming through the brown, but the color of the lollipop is brown. And you could see the yellow coming through. And that's what I mean by a dominant color, doing it a dominant way, letting the color dominate. So those are four ways I lay down my color. Now remember, these cards are here to help you. They're a crutch. None of the colors are going to blend poorly with each other. You're not going to suddenly get a, a mud when you're mixing these colors. And when you lay down these colors that are on these cards, if you lay them down in different ways like starting with the yellow first or starting with the green first or starting with like brown first will determine how that object looks. So with this, I bring to the conclusion the CMW workbook. And I want to congratulate all of those who have moved on to the last lesson and have made it through. Your learning doesn't stop here. And I'm happy to say we will be continuing with another course in, in the very near future. This course can be started at any time and you can work at your own pace. To get the paperwork for this course, I'll leave a link in the description. And with that, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.